This is the U-22, normally driven by Todd Yarling. It is an open cockpit boat. He is not harnessed in the boat. Uh, in the instance of a crash, uh, he would normally get ejected if for some reason the engine was running when you, the diver, got on the boat. Pull this knob right here and that will shut off all systems. If there's a fire in the engine compartment or the cockpit, pull this pin out of the shaft and hit that button and that will deploy the automatic halon system. Now this boat runs on methanol, which uh, cannot be seen when it's burning, so be very careful when you're getting on the boat. Uh, if it is on fire, you may see heat waves coming off it, but you won't see any flames. Okay, this is Todd Yarling, driver of the U-22. He wears an open face helmet with this breakaway face piece. All you have to do is pull it off at these snaps. He has a small collar on behind him. He has a skid flap on his life jacket. Okay, if he's in the water and his parachute is deployed to release it from the life jacket, push in on these side clips and his parachute will come out. Now if he's still in the cockpit for some reason and we have to get him out, this hook will be attached inside the cockpit. That's his automatic parachute deployment hookup. So unhook that from the boat and put it back on the life jacket. This is the U-8 Mr. Pringles, normally driven by Scott Pierce. It is an open cockpit, but he is harnessed in. He has the standard Luke harness. To release, turn either way, all the way, and it will lock open, and everything will fall apart. Now, normally, you wouldn't have to release the steering wheel. He has a lot of room between the wheel and him. If for some reason you did have to release it, squeeze the collar behind it, and it comes off the shaft. To squeeze that spring-loaded collar. These are the only two external cutoff switches. Both toggles lift the cap up, flip the toggle for fire, and that shuts off all his systems. All right, this is Scott Pierce's helmet. It's a full-face helmet. This piece does not break away. These are his radio connections here, just uh, pull to disconnect. He wears the uh, standard small collar under the helmet. Now his life jacket is partial buoyancy and partial CO2. It does offer some buoyancy without inflating the CO2 mechanism. Uh, once you get him out from under the boat and to the surface, just pull this cord to inflate the CO2. It also has a mouthpiece for oral inflation. This is the U7 Thor Racing. Uh, driven by Jerry Hopp. It's an open cockpit. He is not strapped in the boat. If uh, he's ejected and the boat's still running, this is the master cutoff switch. Just flip this toggle down to cut all systems off. If there's a fire on board, you have to pull this pin out, lift the cap, and flip the switch. It'll only go one way, and that will deploy his halon system. This boat runs on uh, aviation gasoline with uh, ADI alcohol injection and uh, nitrous oxide very flammable, be very careful. These are uh, Jerry Hopps helmet and life jacket. He wears an open face helmet with goggles and a life jacket without a parachute. Hey, this is the U1 Miss Budweiser, turbine powered using Jet A fuel. If you come on the boat and there's a fire in the engine compartment, push this orange button, which will open this panel up. You can pull this knob, which will shut all fuel systems off. Then push this for uh, cockpit halon deployment and that for the engine compartment deployment. Just push to deploy. Now to get into the canopy, push this button, turn this handle in the direction of the arrow, and lift the canopy. Now if this boat's upside down, it's going to flood immediately. They have not tried to make this water tight. Because of the uh, large opening of the canopy, uh, the best means of extrication would be from underwater. So the first diver in the water, go underneath and open this up from underwater. First thing you'll see is the driver's helmet. It's day glow orange. Now there is a light inside the uh, cockpit, so that light should be on and give you some help. To take the steering wheel off, reach behind it. There's a spring-loaded collar. Squeeze it between your thumb and forefinger. And that's how it releases. Now even if the boat's upside down, you can tuck it up 
under here. Now you can release his uh, speaker connection. It's a simple pull disconnect. Now he'll have a cool suit on. These two clear vinyl tubes will go into a suit uh, under his life jacket. To release his cool suit, lift up on the red handle and pull the tubes out. Now it's very soft hose. If you have any problems, just try to pull it. And it cuts easily also. <clears throat> his air mask can be left on under any extrication operation. They have enough air hose to get him down and out of the cockpit outside the sponson and to the surface while leaving the air mask on. Uh, I, I don't recommend doing anything to adjust his air mask. It has a, a bleeder screw right here and that will regulate the amount of air going into his mask. Turning it clockwise will let more air in. Counterclockwise will reduce that free flow. If you can hear he's breathing, leave it as it is. <clears throat> To release, turn the red lever either way, all the way, and it will stay unlocked. Now because the way he's positioned in the cockpit, his thighs squeeze up against the side straps, and they must be manually pulled out. Now if the boat's upside down, the first diver goes in underwater and starts releasing the driver. The second man on the boat should release the escape hatch from the surface. And if he can see those two red straps, he can help pull them out as the diver releases the harness. Once the harness is released and everything else is clear, you should be able to pull him down underwater and outside of the cockpit. Once you get him to the surface to release his air mask, first pull these speaker connections apart. That's for his microphone. He's got these two clips that go into these receptacles on each side of the helmet. Pull them out and the whole assembly comes off. Now, to inflate the uh, CO2 mechanism on his suit, just pull this knob here. And you also have an oral inflation tube. Now, there is a good amount of buoyancy before you ever inflate the CO2. But if you need the extra buoyancy, go ahead and pull the CO2 cord. Now, if for some reason the divers cannot get the driver out from underwater, and he has to be taken out through the escape hatch. There are handles on this life jacket right here. And there are also handles at the shoulders here to help in extrication. The second diver on the boat should try to open the escape hatch. The handle is the same mechanism as on the canopy. Push this button, turn the handle in the direction of the arrow, and the whole hatch will come out. Now that's what you'll see. Now, if you can see the, uh, that the diver has released his harness, these are the two straps you want to pull out right there. And you have to do that or he won't come out. And if this gets in the way or is a problem, go ahead and cut this small stainless steel cable. This is the U00 Miller American. These are the external switches. This is for master cutoff. Pull this T-handle up. And this is the fire extinguisher deployment switch. Lift the cap and push the button. All right, the extrication procedure for the Miller American is basically the same as the Budweiser. Even if the boat's upside down, our primary means of extrication is through the canopy. So the first diver goes underwater, opens up the uh, canopy hatch, turn this T-handle in the direction of the arrow, and open the hatch up. Now, if for some reason you turn the handle and the hatch doesn't open, you can get a pry bar in here and pry against this handle. Now the second diver on the boat should go to the underside of the boat and release the escape hatch. <clears throat> the first thing you'll see is his face and air mask. This knob here can be turned either way, all the way, and the mask will start free flowing. Now the mask can be left on. He has enough air hose to get out of the cockpit and through this hole between the sponson and the cockpit. He doesn't have enough hose to go outside the sponson, however. <laughs> so leave the air mask on, click it over to free flow. Next thing you'll have to do is remove his steering wheel. He has a standard steering wheel. Squeeze the spring-loaded collar between your thumb and fingers and pull it off the shaft. 
He is not wearing a cool suit, so you won't have to worry about cool suit connections. And he doesn't have a life jacket on. He is, however, wearing a foam flotation pad underneath his driving suit. Okay, he hasn't been using a radio connection all year, so don't worry about any uh, radio or speaker cables. The last thing you'll do is release his harness, and it's the same type of release as all the others. Turn this lever either way, all the way over, and it'll lock it open, and he'll come out of it. Now, he also has pads around his body in the cockpit. And if you have to, to assist in the extrication, you can take all these Velcro pads out. Once you get him out of the cockpit and to the surface, you can take his air mask off the same way as the Budweiser. Pull these clips out, and his air mask will come off. Leave it on until he's to the surface of the water. Okay, the uh, Miller has the same release on his escape hatch as he has on his canopy. And that's a T-handle. Turn in the direction of the arrow, and the whole hatch comes down and away. And you'll be looking at the driver's thighs. The chip has handles on his driving suit, which will uh, assist in extrication if we have to get him out from the escape hatch. This is Mitch Evans, driver of the U-15. He wears a full-face helmet and a full-flotation life jacket with a parachute. Now, if the parachute is deployed in the water to release, pull those side, push these side clips in and pull the whole mechanism off. And that will release his parachute from the life jacket. This is the U-15. It uses an Allison engine, uh, aviation gas, nitrous oxide, and alcohol injection. The cutoff switches are right here. Push in that black button and that will kill everything. And for the fire extinguisher, pull this pin out the shaft and hit that red button. The boat is a rear cockpit, open cockpit, no harness. And if the driver crashes, he should be ejected from the cockpit. This is the U5 Frank Kinney Toyota Mazda Volvo. They use a Rolls-Royce Griffin V12 engine fueled by aviation gas, nitrous oxide, and alcohol injection. It is an open cockpit. The driver is not strapped in. If uh, the boat is running and you have to shut it off, flip this cap up and flip that toggle switch up and that'll shut off his master, uh, master cutoff system. This is the fire deployment. They're using Halon. Lift the cap, flip the toggle up to deploy the Halon. This is the U-30 Miss Seco. They are running a uh, V-12 aviation gas powered motor. The uh, master kill switch is on the starboard side of the boat. Just pull it out completely and that will cut off the entire electrical system. This is Andy Coker's uh, driving life jacket. It's a full flotation security with parachute. He has not been hooking the parachute up this season. Normally this clip would be hooked inside the boat. He's leaving it on the life jacket. If for some reason he decides to hook it up, crashes, and is in the water with the parachute released, disconnect it by pushing in these side pieces. and pulling it off and that'll release the chute from the life jacket. If you have any problems just go ahead and cut this strap. This is the U-100 Miss Rock. It's a V-12 piston powered boat fueled with aviation gas, nitrous oxide and alcohol water injection. This is the external kill switch. It's a toggle switch presently in the off position. Flip it back towards the stern of the boat to shut the engine off. <clears throat> this is the uh, fire suppression system Pull this pin and hit the red knob and that will uh, deploy the halon into the cockpit and engine compartment. The U-100 is an open cockpit boat. The driver is not harnessed in. If in the event of an accident, uh, he will get ejected from the cockpit. He's wearing a full flotation security life jacket without a parachute. And he's wearing an open face helmet with a, uh, a face piece which removes by loosening these thumb screws and sliding the face piece all the way out of the helmet. This is the U-80. It's a Allison V-12 methanol powered boat. As you know, methanol cannot be seen when it's burning. You may see oil burning or you may see uh, heat waves coming off the engine, but be very careful when you get on the boat. The uh, cutoff switch is the big red dial on the left. Just flip the black lever to the off position and that will cut off the engine. The fire suppression system is the red button on the right. 
push the button to deploy the Halon. Ron Armstrong is the driver. It is an open cockpit boat, and in the event of an accident, he should get thrown out of the cockpit. This is Ron Armstrong, driver of the U-80. He wears a full flotation lifeline life jacket with a parachute. He has a standard release mechanism. If the parachute is deployed in the water behind him, push in these side flips and pull to release. If for some reason they get jammed, this strap can be cut. He's wearing a full face helmet. And he has his radio connection right here. If it's hooked up and he's inside the cockpit, just pull it apart. This is the U6 Miss Madison. It's a rear cockpit, open cockpit, but he is harnessed in. He has uh, two belt straps and crotch straps, no shoulder straps. The release is the same as all the other boats. Turn this red lever either way, all the way to release the harness. The steering wheel does not come out of this boat, but there's plenty of room to get him out without taking it off. <clears throat> this is the master kill switch. Pull to shut the engine off. This is the fire extinguisher deployment switch. Pull this pin and hit the button to deploy the Halon into the cockpit and engine compartment. This boat is powered by a uh, Allison V12, which is fueled by uh, methanol, which can't be seen when it's burning. Ron Snyder is the driver of the U6. He's wearing a full flotation lifeline jacket. There is no parachute in it because he is strapped in the cockpit. He's wearing an open face helmet and he's wearing a filter system which filters out the methanol fumes. He has an oral nasal face mask with a big bore hose going to a filter cartridge setup. And the filter cartridge setup is attached to one of his uh, life jacket straps. So it will stay with him when he gets, uh, comes out of the boat. This is his microphone and speaker connection for his radio setup. It's just a simple pull to disconnect. This is the U-17 Tempest. It's an open cockpit boat. The driver is not harnessed in it. This is the cutoff switch for the master engine cutoff. To deploy it, push this red button in and pull the whole assembly out. Pull it all the way out until this cord comes all the way out. This is the fire extinguisher deployment button. Pull this pin out of the shaft and hit the button to deploy the Halon. They are powered by a uh, Rolls-Royce Merlin V12 using aviation gas, nitrous oxide, and alcohol and water injection. The driver of the U-17 is Jack Schaefer. He's wearing a full face helmet and a full flotation lifeline jacket with a parachute. This is the U-2 Oboy Alberto. It's powered by a Rolls Merlin V12 engine fueled by aviation gas, nitrous oxide, with alcohol, water injection. The driver sits in an open cockpit, but he is strapped in. This is the fire suppression system switch. It's a toggle switch. Just flip it up to deploy the Halon. Flip that switch up to kill the engine if it's running. <clears throat> the driver's using a six-point harness with the standard release mechanism. Turn the red lever either way, all the way, to release it. And all the straps will come apart easily. Now if the steering wheel needs to be taken off, push this button, pull this pin out, and remove the wheel from the center. George Woods is the driver of the Alberto. He's wearing a partial CO2, partial buoyancy life jacket. If after you get him out of the cockpit you need that extra buoyancy, pull this cord to inflate the CO2 mechanism. It also has an oral inflation tube on it. Now he's the only driver on the circuit this year to be wearing the Grand Prix style helmet. To take the helmet off, first you have to release this neck ring. Push these orange buttons in and pull this neck ring down. And that hinges open from the front and from the back. <clears throat> 